So now that we have chosen the genetics that meet our purpose and we've created the environment to support these genetics, we have to turn our attention to the nutrients and additives that these plants need to complete their life process. Upon first inspection, this topic is going to appear overwhelming. There are so many different nutrient companies offering different nutrient lines. But just as when you walk into the supermarket and there's five different brands of bread, keep in mind that a lot of these products are different brands of the same thing. So what I want to communicate to you is the principles of the matter. You need what we call a main food. The main food is going to comprise all of the necessary macro and micronutrients. Main foods nowadays, whether they're a one part powdered food or a one part chemical food, liquid, these are all going to be mostly complete. It can even be as simple as a one part organic product that you use from start to finish with no additives to produce clean medicine. The point I'm making is that the number one need you need to address is the main food. So the main food can also come in a two-part synthetic nutrient. This is definitely the most popular nutrient line that I've sold in my 20-year career. It's the reigning champ. It has pulled down the biggest yields that I've been able to confirm. So we have a two-part nutrient here. They're used in equal amounts, so it's very simple in that regard. So for vegetative growth, we need our main food and we normally need a B vitamin. That is very common. There's a few other products that you might choose to use, like mycorrhizae organisms, trichoderma, these different microorganisms colonize your root zone, stimulating root growth, facilitating nutrient uptake. This is one of the things that people gardening organically might really look at. But at the end of the day, when it comes to your meeting the needs of your vegetative growth, all you really need is your main food and your B vitamin. Some types of plant material will benefit greatly from a calcium magnesium additive during the vegetative process. These plants have a very healthy appetite for calcium and magnesium and can't quite seem to get enough in a main food, otherwise it will bind up and lock out in the container. So we routinely sell it as an additive. Now, looking at the flowering process, again, we need our main food and we need additives to go with that main food. So calcium and magnesium is one of the most important flowering additives that we can consider. From there, we have the additives that actually blow up flower size. These additives, like Massive, typically increase the amount of P and K that is in the nutrient solution and provide some additional natural stimulants to the flowering process. So this will blow up your flower size. It's important to have a flowering additive. They usually do increase yield substantially. And then your calcium magnesium additive is going to fill in those flowers and make them hard. The only other things that you really need for the flowering process potentially are car carbohydrate additives in a liquid or powder form. These additives give the plants energy without making them work for it. Other considerations may be root disease controls. If you're gardening in a recirculating water garden, root disease is your number one enemy. The natural approach would be to use an enzyme product to dissolve decaying root matter, removing it from the root zone. This decaying root matter is the substrate that root disease breeds on, so it's important to get it out of the system. Another approach, better for recirculating hydroponic gardens that you want to keep sterile, would be something like clean slate. And there are a few last beautiful little additives that we might consider, like Turpinator, which is going to increase the essential oil production of your particular plant. But the basics really lie in covering your main food and your flowering additive and your calcium magnesium additive. Those are your needs. So you can talk to your local hydroponic retail professional and find out how you can gain access to these yield enhancing products. I know all of that can seem a little bit intimidating at first. It's hard to remember everything all at once. 
So keep in mind that good nutrient manufacturers put together what we call feed charts with weekly schedules to help you focus on exactly how to mix your nutrient solution so that you get the best use of the products you've purchased. It appears challenging at first, but really, once you get into this process, you're gonna find it's like following a recipe and you will probably really enjoy feeding your plants and mixing nutrient solutions. Just remember to keep an eye on your parts per million and your pH so that your plants can really make use of these excellent nutrient solutions that you're going to apply. So check it out. You can have a 15,000 square foot warehouse with over 5,000 SKUs of products available to you. And without the knowledge necessary to use these products, they will not help you achieve the yields that you're after. So I want to emphasize to continue learning. Keep on reaching out to resources that will help you use these products to achieve your goals. Check out my book, The Teachings of the Garden Sage, at thegardensage.com or thegrowershandbook.com. Just remember, you never need to stop learning about Mother Nature because she is the foundation for all of us.